Okay, so let's uh, let's dive straight in. Um, so we're into Zoho CRM, and the components or the module that we're going to be focusing on today is our analytics module. Now, just to just to put the terminology into some context, every uh, version of Zoho CRM will have an analytics module, and um, that's not to be confused with Zoho Analytics. So this is Zoho CRM Analytics that we're talking about. And Zoho Analytics is a separate product uh, that sits alongside CRM and does really deep dive analysis of your data. And it's not that product that we're looking at today. Uh, we are going to be doing some sessions on analytics this year, um, but right now it's about CRM analytics. So they're the different terms that we use. And this module um, has, been, has been developed to make it very easy to present visual graphics and displays for all of your data in the CRM. So it's a pretty powerful one. Um, so we're going to dive straight in and I'm going to start with the first one and we're going to create a new dashboard today. So let's talk about some of the navigation like we normally do on these workouts. So when you head into the analytics module, you're going to see on the left hand side your navigation panel. And here is the list of your analytics dashboards. So you can see we can add a new one, which we're going to do shortly. We're going to create a dashboard. We also have the drop down, which is going to highlight our favorites, the ones we've starred the ones created by you as the user, the ones that have been shared with you, all of the dashboards for the organization, and then other users. So you've got some flexibility to go in and filter this view. So that one's created by me, or all, and so on. Also as well, if you've got multiple dashboards, so if you're starting to create lots of them, then you've got your search facility in here, which will filter it down to the dashboard that you want to see. So really easy to use, really easy to navigate your way around. Uh, on the um, headline panel, you can see here this star. So if I do want to make organization overview a favorite, then we can mark this with a star. And you'll see the star has appeared on the left hand side. But also if we go to our favorites, then that one is now part of our favorite component. So you can filter these down sh should they um, you know, become a little bit cumbersome in the amount that you have. If ever you want to refresh, um, a view of the dashboard, then click on refresh and that will refresh the data. So if you've made some changes or you've done a mass update or you've done an import of data or you just want to refresh it just to see what the latest stats are, then you can go in and hit the refresh key here, which will refresh the components only rather than doing a full browser refresh. And then on the top right hand side, you've got your normal um, uh, ellipses, which will show the ability to clone the whole dashboard, reorder, which we're going to be looking at, or indeed view in full screen. Um, so when you want to view it in full screen, you can blow it up and uh, maybe present it on uh, visual monitors or something bigger in the office when we return to real offices and so on. And as always, you've got your little help screen here, which um, you won't see the pop up. It pops up into a different screen, but that will give you the Zoho help that you require. OK, so let's go in and we're going to start with um, uh, creating a new dashboard. So let's hit the create. And it will open up this screen with a grid, which allows us to manage and um, sort out our dash. And uh, let's have a look at one of the first things, which is the security and permissions for the dashboard. So by default, when you create a dashboard, it will be visible only to you. And if you click this button, you can then decide to give this the ability of this one to all users or customize it and set it for different sets of users. So you can use your groups, you can use your users, you can use your roles or you can use your roles and subordinates. So in this case, you know, we're going to select two users, Duncan and Craig, but you can have specific users. I'm going to cancel that off and we're going to stick with the all users uh, for this particular dashboard. Start by entering the dashboard name. So this is our one hour workout example and uh, we're good to go. We're good to start. So the first ones we're going to look at are target meters because they're easy and we can build into this workout and they're very simple to use. So click on the target meter and that will bring up the options. So everything in analytics is wizard driven, um, which means that they're fairly simple to configure because you just drop through and choose the options that you want and play with it and do a bit of trial and error. And that will um, eventually give you the result that you require. So let's click on um, this one here, which is our first kind of dial. And uh, I'm going to click on the dial. And we're going to choose, now um, we're going to choose deals one in 2020. So let's go with deals one 2020. And we're going to set the target for, so just work your way through the wizard. 
we're going to set the target for the entire organization in this case. Now, let me talk about this one while we're here. We could set the target for individual users, so we can go custom users, and then our system only has Craig and Duncan in it, so we'll select Craig and Duncan, or we can actually go for roles. So we could say we're only interested in doing this for the CEO and manager roles, and if you have more roles in your business, then you could effectively select them. And then the final option is to go for a pick list value. So we could set the, set the pick list for deals of a certain type. So if we choose deals, we would then choose the type. And we may say we only want it for gig management, for sound equipment, and for tour management. So we can filter down the target that we're going to set uh, dependent on pick list fields, on users, or for the entire organization. So in this case, case, we're going to go for the entire org just to keep it simple right now. And our target metric is going to be based on our deals, which is our sales pipeline. But we could also relate it to other modules. And I'm not going to cover that right now. I'm just going to keep it simple and just keep it on deals. And then the metric that it's going to use is it's going to pull out all of our metric fields. So that's things like amounts and number fields, so currency fields, number fields, decimal fields, percentage fields. It's going to pull out all of those measurable fields that we have available in that module so that we can create the target meter. So let's go with deals one. And in order to see deals one, we want to look at our revenue. So in this case, we're going to go with the amount field, and it's going to be the sum of the amount. So let's click on sum of the amount. And then because it's deals one, we need to add some criteria. So we can go in and add criteria at this point. And the criteria for our one deals is going to be the stage. And it's going to be is closed one. So we're only interested in the deals closed one in 2020. So let's also add in that criteria. So it's going to be closing date and is. And we could use the filters, but we're going to use between. So let's go between. And that will give us our two dates. So we're going to go between uh, the 1st of January 2020. And that's going to throw up 2021. So let's just go in and amend that. So that's between 1st of January 2020 and 1st of January 2021. And then closing date, we're going to go with um, actually, we're going to go last thousand days. I'll explain that in a second. And we'll go with 300,000, 3 million, and done. So now we've seen our deals won 2020. And you can see here we've got a target of 3 million, and we've done 2.875 million. So we have this remaining, and it's showing our balance remaining. So very, very simply, we've already created a target meter. And if we go in and adjust the target, now we'll change that to that. That used to happen in my corporate sales days quite a lot, actually. Um, <laughs> shifting the goalpost. So we shifted the goalpost from 3 million to 5 million, so now our target meter is square in the middle. So very, very easy and also very visual. Now, if I save that one, and let, what we can do now is we can click on the three dots and clone this. So this time, let's go with deals open. And instead of closed one, we'll add in our open pipeline. So that's these stages here. So the opposite effect are closed. And let's save that one. And now we can see that our pipeline is actually 17 million right now, or it's 22 million. So let's edit that one. And we're going to change that one to, well, we're going to add in another extra zero, playing some big values here. OK, so we can see that our deals open is currently 22 million, and we've closed 2 million. So it's very easy to create them just from uh, cloning. So let's go in and clone it finally. And we'll, this time, we'll go with our deals lost and of course this time we'll just bring in our close lost and just simply save that and there we can see that our close lost we don't really want to target for this one but let's go in and adjust it so that it is again is somewhere reasonable so let's edit this one and actually we just want this to be six and save. 
So now we can see that we're reaching our target of deals lost, which is actually not a positive thing in this instance. We actually don't want to reach that target. But right now, this is what the start of our dashboard. We've got a whole bunch of little uh, widgets at the top that give us an instant visual on our one open and our deals lost. Interestingly, what I might want to do is reorder these. So if I just want to reorder them, I can click on the reorder. And actually what I want to do is I want to put it in open, one, and lost in that order. Okay, so there's a simple start with our uh, target meters. I just want to show you, I'm not going to actually build this because I don't want to dwell on this, but you've also got a diff different visual here with the um, red, amber, and green. Uh, so let, let's do it. Let's just go deals one again, just to show you. So entire org and deals. And this time we'll go with a count actually rather than the sum. Uh, and let's just remove that and we'll go for closing date. And instead of doing the, um, uh, the yeah, let's go last. Closing date is last thousand days again. And our target is this and add and reorder. So because it was a count, it's 482 we've got here. So let's um, save that. And we can edit this. So we're going to make this 500. That's because I had the count rather than the amount. So we've got 500. So we're at 482 with 18 remaining for deals one. And what we can also do is customize this. So I can show you the spread. And then save this. So now you can see we're just in the green zone. So these can sometimes be a little bit helpful if you've got different uh target areas for where you want your um your needles to be so there we've put it right in the green zone at the end um which has allowed us to customize it a little further so these actually are quite neat as well okay so target meters covered very easy i'm just going to nip to the q a excellent stuff dunk dunk has that in control so i'm very happy just to leave that where it is okay so um let's move on to the next one I'm going to add a component and just click on the target meter. And what I want to show you, um, this one's very similar to the above one, so I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to show you the multiple target meters. So this region-wise one is a good example. So let's select the meter. And then what I'm going to show you is, let me just refer back to my example. So this one is going to be average deal value by user. So let's do that. So average deal value by user. And we're going to set the target this time for our users. So this is where we're going to pull in our custom users. And in our case, we're going to, we can only choose Duncan and Craig. If you've got more users available, then you'll be able to list them out up to a value of five users at each time. Our target metric is again going to be the deals. And this time, instead of count of deals, you'll be able to see that we've got an average of amount. So it's not just counts and sums. You've also got the mathematical elements of averages and minimum and maximum. So I'm going to choose the average of amount, which is going to give us that. And um, we'll keep the criteria uh, open for now. And the duration will go with the closing date. And we'll also go again with this last thousand days. And our target, I'm going to go with that big number. And also, in this case, we've got set individual targets, which I'll show you in a second. So now we've set, individual, we've set the um, table to show Duncan and Craig as a target meter. So let's save that one. And it will present our data initially. I'm just going to remove this one so you can click the three dots and remove it. And then also, if we go back to the reorder, then you'll see now that I can resize and reshape this. Okay. So now we've got Craig and Dunk, and we've got this massive target, which we're now going to amend. So let's um, just edit this one. And we're going to change that, I think it's to something like 150,000. Cool. So you can see here that this one is the average deal amount by user. So Duncan is first user, Craig second user. And the average deal amount that, um, that Duncan's achieved is 194K, which is 129% of target. And uh, Craig, uh, 197, so 131% of target. And they've both got the same target of 150K 
in terms of average deal value. Let's go in and change that for individuals. So we're going to edit that now. And because uh, Duncan's super sales guy, he's going to get a target of 200,000 for that average deal value. And Craig's going to get 150,000. And we can now set the individual ones. We're going to save that. And so now you'll be able to see that we've got different targets for different people. So here now we can see that Dunk has achieved 97% of his average deal target. And uh, Craig's 131,000 because we've got different values. So this is a really cool way of um, you know, setting, setting sales targets for your, for your salespeople or for your agents. Uh, and also setting the different target levels and then sharing that information. So, uh, so a really good way of doing the target meters. Okay, so if I just click on this, you'll see that that's the extent of our target meters. This one, as I say, is very similar, but uh, very, very easy to deploy and extremely visual and also a good way of maybe creating competition or being able to see how the business department is doing as a whole, you know, that kind of team environment where you've got the dials on the big screen. These are the perfect way of presenting those, uh, those types of scenarios. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, which is our charts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another one. So this is our 1HW charts. And again, I'm going to share this with all users. Okay, so let's make a start with a clean dashboard. So we're going to click on chart, and you'll notice it comes up straight away with quick chart off from reports. So we can use the from reports one uh, from the report session that we did last week. If we've created a chart in a report, we'll be able to pull that chart in to our dashboard. So let's, um, let's just give an example of that. Uh, so let me just select the report. So I'm going to go with um, pipeline by stage. And we're going to change that to a funnel chart. And we can call this one pipeline by stage. And we'll stick with record count because I just want to show you pulling it in from a report. So this one is just generated from the pipeline by stage report. Let me just open that one for you. So this is our report module that we covered on last week's one hour workout. If you're with us, I'm going to search for that report. So pipeline by stage is here. And when we when we generate the chart, that's what it's pulling from this information. So when we create the chart here and save that, that's the, that's the chart that's being pulled into the dashboard. So you can pull the charts you're creating reports into the analytics dashboards as well, but we're not really focused on that today. It's just showing you the option. Let's go ahead and delete that one. So create a chart, we're gonna do a quick chart, which allows us to do that exercise instantly without going through the reporting. So the first chart we're gonna create, just have a look, is our one deals by date, and I'm just gonna show you a line item. So one deals by date. And the module we're going to choose again is our deals one because this gives us our uh, data that we want to see. And the measure on this axis is going to be the, well, let's stick with a count and then we'll change it in a second. And the grouping is for the x axis. So we're going to go with closing date and we're going to go by year. So we kept it really simple right now. Let's just click on done for that and see what data we get. So this gives us our first indication again, reorder and resize. So this one's a very, very simple um, each year with a count of the deals. And it's not really one by deals by date. It's currently just the count of the deals, but at least we've got some information. So now let's go and edit it and make it one deals by date. So we go in and edit this one and add the filter. So the stage is going to be closed one because it's one deals by date and save and that will reduce the counts down so this time we can see that it's 19 and 29 instead of the hundreds that we've currently got so we've filtered it down to one deals by date and this is only showing the counts so if we're looking at one deals we may want to bring in revenue so let's go in and edit that one and instead of the count of deals we're going to change this to the sum of the amount and save and so that's going to give us the sums for each year so we could see that we had a great year in uh, 2016, not so great in 2017. So it's showing us the, the differences. And let's edit this one again. And again, you can see here that we can also choose something as simple as our average amounts. So save that one. This should be pretty level across the board as it's, uh, as it's imported data. 
let's just change this again now so that's a chart type if you're doing a simple chart you can go to the top right hand side here and you can see that we've selected a column chart but with this type of data you may have to uh, another couple of different types so you can have a horizontal style so if we save that one it's going to give us more of a comparator again and also if we edit it for this type of for this type of data we may even see a line chart let's save that one so that gives us a trend now with a trend also we get some additional information so if i click on edit here and click on more options then we can also add in a benchmark for the x-axis so our benchmark in this case is going to be 200,000 for our average deal value let's click on save and that's now added in our benchmark so we can see our great year in 2015 and then some sort of drop off and then over in 2019 we got our average up again so it's starting to give us some really good business information on average deal value by year with this benchmark as a comparison and you can see how quick and easy it is to create this data you know it's not it's not complex stuff it's a matter of creating the wizard in the first place and then going in and refining and tweaking it as you go along okay let's add in another component with the chart we're going to go to quick chart again and um, this time I just want to show you let me just go back to my settings yep so let's go with um, deals in pipeline and our deals and I just want to show you these um, pies and pies and donuts which are pretty easy so we're going to go with pie chart and then let's go with the count of the deals and the grouping we're going to use this time is for a type so um, we're going to choose our type and then again just experiment with it first of all so let's go deal types in pipeline so by pipeline we don't want closed one so stage and isn't closed one and let's add that one so here now we can see that we've got our uh, travel roadie crew gig management and we can see the different counts displayed as a pie chart which is you know pretty simple stuff but again it's given us a really good visual on our data okay let's save that component the other style of one that you can use instead of a pie chart is the donut so if we go in and do the count again and this time change it to a donut chart and save and you get a slightly different visual um, similar style but the uh, the round ring style instead of the pie chart okay so that one is charts complete uh, I'll let you fire away your questions to Duncan maybe at the end if we get some time I'll show you some um, I'll answer some of those questions okay so let's add a new dashboard and this time we're going to cover the KPIs so let's call this one one HW one hw kpis it's a lot of acronyms and select our kpi and the first one i'm going to choose is these simple widgets here so we're going to go with revenue this month so let's click on this standard kpi and we're going to go with revenue this year and again simple stuff we're going to choose our deal module and because it's revenue we're going to choose the amount field so the sum of the amount and we're going to criteria. I'm not going to criteria it because, it, yeah, go on. We'll criteria it. Um, so the stage is going to be closed one, and the duration is going to be closing date and this year. So there's there's not going to be that much data actually for this year, but we can we can use it anyway. And then you can see this comparison. So this is the up and down. The green arrow here is the comparison. It shows last month. So it's going to say compare to previous period. Now the previous period for this one, if the closing date is this year, the previous period is going to be closing date is last year. And then the objective of the arrow is to consider an increase in value as positive. So revenue going up is a good thing. But in some cases, it might be like uh, complaints launched where the value going up is a negative thing. So, you, you know, you'd have com consider the increase in value as negative. So let's see the results. Uh, so revenue this year is currently uh, 462,000 and that's down on last year which it should be because we're only into February but it's down on last year uh, at 2.8 million 
So let's go and just edit this one. And I just want to do, instead of closing date this year, let's do this quarter, which will compare it to the previous quarter. So let's click on done there. And you can see it's a bit more realistic. So for this quarter, we're halfway through February. So it'll be end of March. The revenue is 462K. Last quarter was 604. So we're down 23%. So that one's showing as an instant um, visual on, uh, on our KPIs. So comparing this quarter against last quarter. Let's save that one. And then we can just add in another one. And I'm just going to show you a really kind of easy one as well. You've also got this just a basic counter. So if we go with deals, let's go with um, pipeline deals. And we're going to choose our deals module. And just to count this time, but a simple count of stage. So you can see that use similar fields each time. Qualification, initial meeting, build, quoted, and negotiation. So in other words, they're in the pipeline, they're open. And our duration, let's go with closing date, is this year. And add that one in. So we've currently got 12 deals in the pipeline. Save it and then clone it. And this time we're going to go with, uh, let's go one deals, better than closed. And we can just do this. We could go isn't qualification, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what we could also do is go closed one. Okay, and save that one. And so there we can very instantly see twelve in the pipeline and three one for this year. And finally, let's edit this one. Uh, sorry, not edit it. I want to clone this one. And we're going to go with close lost and uh, rename this one to lost deals and save. And there we go. So 12 open, three, one, and three lost. Uh, and just going to edit it again. And here we've got a change template where we can go in and change it back to this one and save. So you can see the the different comparisons. So this year we're 92% down on lost deals because we had 26 last year. So that's a good thing in that case. Okay, so let's uh, click on our KPIs again. So they're the top three. Uh, and then I'm gonna just show you this one. This, this one I really like actually, it's good for comparing accounts. So let's choose the KPI style as the scorecard. And uh, this one is gonna be our top accounts. And the module we're going to use this time is the accounts, but we're going to have a related module this time, and that's the deals. So that's the the uh, the accounts where we've actually uh, won some deals, or we have an open pipeline. You're getting used to the stats that I'm using right now. And the figure we're going to use is the sum of the amount in deals. Um, and let's go. Let's let's keep it open for now, just so we get the data first of all, and the duration. Again, is going to be our closing date of this year, and it's going to compare against the previous period and consider the increase in value as positive. And then we want our scorecard table, so we need to have something to rank it by. So we're going to rank it by account name. Let's choose name. So the account name, and then we've got a choice of showing our top five or our top 20 or bottom five and bottom 20. So let's choose our top 20 and see what data we get. So let's add that in. And there we go. So we've got our top accounts now visualized. So these are going to be down again because we're doing compared with last year. So we're currently 73% down with Queen, 89% uh, down with Pink Floyd, and so on and so on. And our new new uh, win, the Tavish Trio, uh, we're 100% up because they're a new win. So there's no, no, no data to compare with last year. Let's um, save that one. And let's just reduce the... Um, comparison period again so this time closing date and we're going to go this quarter and again it's going to automatically choose the previous period which is last quarter let's save that one so this time we've got a bit more of a comparison we can see for th for this quarter uh we're a little bit down but deep purple we're only 10 percent down so they're getting to the point where we're doing the same value each quarter and it's uh it's given us a, an instant visual on that 
Uh, the top occurrence is being shown by revenue, and then here's the comparison against last year. There's a really simple but really effective table to create in terms of um, your account management and account landscaping to see who's spending with you uh, and also the comparison against last year. Uh, very, very simple to do and very powerful. Okay, so KPIs, that's it for KPIs. So hopefully they're all clear as well. So now let's move on to the next one, which is our comparators. Okay, so let's add a new dashboard. And um, one HW comparators. And we're gonna choose the comparator. And the first one I'm gonna show you is the year-wise comparison. I really like this. This again is something we deploy quite a lot for our clients. Um, so year-wise, and I'm gonna go by deal type. And we're going to compare again among, and again, you've got the same values here. So users or a specific time or a specific field with a pick list. And for this one, we're going to choose the time period and we're going to choose our years. And then you've got the ability to select up to five different comparisons. So we're going to go with 2020. Uh, we're going to go with 19, 18, 17 and 16 so we're comparing those five years interestingly if you try and add another one it's going to say you can only add five values uh, so you, you have got a comparison of five values here so then let's add in our first parameter just bear with me so our first parameter is going to be for um, type of gig management so all the bands that we're managing their gigs for and the metric is going to be in deals and it's going to be the type sorry it's going to be this sum no 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 it's not it's going to be the count so the number initially of deals and the filter we're going to use is the type is gig management because that's what we're measuring in this case and the associated date field is the closing date so that's matching to this year uh, to the year field in here so it's going to look at that and say if the closing date is in 2017 then populate it into the comparator click on done and then we need to add another one for the comparison so this one is going to be uh, tour management and again the, the measure is going to be the count and the filter is going to be on the deal type <clears throat> and we're going to choose tour management and the associated date field is the closing date. So now we've got two comparisons. We've got gig management and tour management. So again, while you're building these, do it by trial and error. So let's see what that looks like initially. So there we go. Again, very simple, very quick visual. Uh, we've got our deals. We've got 31 deals in 2016 that were for gig management and so on. You can see a, a dip and a rise. And for tour management, let's just add in a third one here. So once you know you're on the right lines, you can go in and add another parameter. So this one's going to be for catering. Again, account and our type is catering. And the duration is going to be based on um, the closing date. Uh, sorry, what's going on yet? Sorry, let me cancel that one. <clears throat> That's it. See, I said at the beginning, there's a live webinar. Things never quite go as go to plan sometimes. I'm going to leave that one. It's gone a little strange, but you get the idea on the year wise by deal type. So it's comparing our gig management to tour management across years. So pretty straightforward stuff. I'm just save that one. Okay, so let's add in um, the next one on our comparators. And the one I wanna show you is here. So this is, this is more done by users. So we can have our user listings and then uh, some metrics against each of those users. It's like a scorecard for our agents. So let's call this one our scorecard. And we're gonna compare against our users and this time choose custom users. And in our case, we've got Duncan and Craig. We're gonna add our first parameter, which is our open deals. And we can select the module, 
again as deals it's going to give accounts and the duration is going to be um let's go with our last 1000 days so we get some data in there and we'll go with a trend no we'll go with a trend we'll click on done and actually get our data first of all so now we can see our scorecard we've got open deals 195 for duncan and uh, uh 287 for craig so let's edit that one and add in another parameter which can be our closed one deals and again we'll go with amount on this one now we'll go with our average figure and done do it for the whole duration so now we can see those averages again we can see that duncan is highlighting a larger average than Craig, but it's allowing us to compare the users against each other with a certain criteria that we've set for the um, uh, for the deals or for the leads or for the account management or whatever else it is you're doing. But scorecards basically allow us to do it by user. And again, you can have up to five users on these. Uh, and if you've got five users, you'll want to start stretching it across so you get the comparison. So again, very easy to reorder. Okay, so that's the comparator types done. Let me just double check that. So in our comparators, we've got the representative scorecard and the year wise. I'm not going to delve into this one, but again, you can see that we could have a certain type and then going across, we can also have the counts and the revenues. So they're all pretty straightforward to do. Uh, but as we're pressing for time, I just want to move on for the final stage, which is just adding advanced ones. So the advanced one I'm going to try and recreate um yeah let's do this is the uh cohort which allows us to compare different dates together so you've got there, there's a, a few different advanced ones there's anomalies cohorts and quadrants um have a play with them you know you can't break anything with this so it's worth going in and having a play so let's click on cohort and we're going to go with the basic one because this is complex enough as it is and we're going to do the tour start date comparison so tour start date okay and the module we're going to use is our deal module and we're going to group it by closing date by year and we're going to count the deals we're going to criteria it this time with the tour start date so in other words our closed one ones we have a uh, the, the actual time we're going to start delivering. So the tour start date is not empty. And we're going to use the sum of the amount. And the duration is from the closing date to the tour start date. So basically, how long is it taking us to close the deal to actually start in delivery? And we're going to measure this by week. And the duration range is one to 10 weeks. So again, trial and error. Let's see what data we get. I'm going to click on done. And we've actually got some data into our cohort which, cohort, which is a result. So let me just stretch this down a little and save it. So let's see what this data is showing us. So we can see that our tour start date, we actually closed, for the deals we closed in 2015, we had 19 that have a tour start date. And then it's showing us the values for each of those that took two weeks to cl from close to tour start three weeks from close to tour start shows us the values so it's just an example of how you can present your data based on two different dates so comparing one date against the other and then the values against each and it's also done uh, a heat map for this as well so where the values are low the color is lighter where the values are high the, the colors are darker so these are getting quite smart and and uh, just as a, an aside zoho are adding more and more of these advanced features to analytics so it's well worth going in and um, and 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 you know seeing what's uh, what's available to you and keeping a regular view as uh, a regular view on what's being added so final stages of this uh uh strong workout today i know i've shown you an absolute load of stuff but basically i'm going to show you how you can add these components to your home screen and it really is very very simple uh to finish with the exercises so if i go to my home screen right now it's uh it's pretty boring it's got some standard stuff on there it might have some uh charts we've added before uh but let's um let's go in and just clear it out so i'm going to delete some of these so our home screen is blank and then we're going to choose some of our favorites 
Okay, so our home screen's pretty clear. Let's also delete that one, that's from last week's workout. And so if we go to our analytics now, and we choose our dashboard, so let's go to our first one. We want these three to be added to our home screen. Just click on the dots and add to home. And add that to home. And this one, because I like those meters. And then we're going to pull one from our charts here. So we actually want to see uh, this one. We'll add that to home. And also our KPIs. Well, we really like uh, this one here. So we're going to add that to home. And also our top accounts. So now we've chosen from our uh, uh, dashboards that we've created. We may also want to choose some from the standard Zoho one. So the funnel one is always popular. So let's add that to home. Um, and have we any lead analytics? Uh, so let's choose hmm, not too much data in leads, I'm afraid, so not much point. Let me just go to organization overview. So yeah, we'll go with leads by source and again, add to home. So I've handpicked from my dashboards the ones that I want on my home screen. So now when I visit the home screen, it's going to look a lot more exciting. It's brightened up my CRM. It's the first thing that I come in and see uh, when I switch on the computer in the morning. Um, and if I want to go and reorder this, uh, just to kind of make it look a little bit better, then it's very easy to come in and um, stretch these out or you know, do what you need to do artistically. If you're feeling creative that day then we can start making this look a little bit better. And finally, let's move that to there. And then save the home page. So yeah, that's the final stretch. We've now got a much better home screen based on some very, very simple analytics that we created. Um, and, um, and it's very, very straightforward to do. That took us less than an hour in today's one-hour workout.